welcome to this uh, webinar again uh, this this was a high demand uh, webinar as um, requested by our members and our friends in fraternity so let me introduce first of all the facilitator who will be going to take this webinar his name is mr shripad and uh, if i talk about his education then he is from hrm from mumbai university professionally groomed in i am kolkata so education and professional grooming is is very much sound if we talk about his uh, association with organization so i think you know national head of sales training of sbi life insurance will be the only thing if i say because that is more than enough yeah so if you are heading sales training of any organization like sbi life insurance that is more than enough but uh, you know it that was not enough for mr shripad he started his own, own venture and then uh, if i start telling about him that will be that will take not less than half an hour i only say in one word for for shripad is that he is a visionary thank you sandeep for that wonderful introduction though uh, one of the things i would say is uh, i was national head of sales training and e learning both i was the one who actually built up sbi life team from scratch only two trainers were there prior to me taking over and uh, uh, one of us colleagues shudipto was invited to be a part of the e learning team there so we have set up e learning team in sbi life in 2007 disclaimers that i would like to share is some of the views are mine and it is not necessary that you accept secondly i may make some observations about certain things qualifications etc but they are again uh, not to be construed as a direct uh, you know remark on somebody else's because end of the day you guys are also experienced guys you guys are, have also been into this industry for long so i leave it to you to you know judge them into the better light so this is where uh, the framework uh, since it has been much in demand i have also had some offline questions queries so i thought uh, it is better if i elaborate some things a bit more last time also when i was talking to all of you i realized that we had to rush up a few things so with your permission uh, with your support i would like to elaborate few things for about 60 minutes and uh, extend a question answer for the next 15 minutes so in all i would require support for about 75 minutes uh, i hope i do have your permission to go ahead and do that uh, what's the agenda for the day Uh, agenda is very simple let's start with uh, something called future shock which uh, i may elaborated last time which is my favorite uh, thing uh, the future shock is already being witnessed so let's talk more about that look back to look ahead is something what uh, have we faced it and what are what are we going to you know what have we done uh, as a result of that then we'll talk about important trends i have now made some more changes here because some important trends yes uh, last time i thought should have been highlighted so Uh, there is a change here as well then we are talking about hard facts this is a new addition from previous because uh, i also realized that uh, there are some facts that all of you must know because today everybody is talking about e learning technology based learning digital uh, digital learning etc etc but these hard facts are not known to you or perhaps not known to you in the uh, form that they might hit you we are talking about some of the strategies future strategies here i have also added one or two more my man my uh, you know favorite author my favorite uh, person who visionary i would say uh, is alvin toffler and he wrote a best seller book called the future shock so he defines future shock in a very cool way future shock is the shattering stress and disorientation that we induce in individuals by subjecting them to too much change in too short a time here just a small change is instead of we induced corona induced in individuals and companies by subjecting them to too much change in too short time so probably probably uh, this is where we all are in a state of future shock future shock so let's find out what this future shock is let's find out what this uh, future shock means to us and let's then keep on building it upon it so six months ago if somebody had told that you know uh, you are suddenly going to uh, forget everything and be confined into your homes and everything will be online you would have laughed at that person and immediately you would have sent him to a place called thane in mumbai which is where you have a mental asylum uh, something which was unimaginable has come true today zoom in zoom out all of us perhaps all of us including corporate bosses trainers students everyone is today you know rushing to go to zoom life has been zoom in zoom out but future is here already and what is that future uh, which we are seeing today uh, the world has changed now this is not a cliche this is not just a sentence from the boardroom 
uh, you would agree with me when I tell you that the world pre-corona and world post-corona are two different things. In that sense, I have said the world has changed. If a second standard student is simply put, put up into the eighth standard, he would suddenly be confused. He will find too much of an information overload and he would then be completely confused. That's how the world has been pushed into the future. So basically, change that we were envisaging 10 to 15 years time span has happened in last 60 days. So you can imagine what would have taken, you know, 10 to 15 years has so rapidly came in like a hurricane and actually uprooted, disoriented, distorted all our, you know, senses, perceptions and uh, it has put into a kind of a spin. We are facing a lot of overload, overload of information, overload of, uh, you know, channels, overload of technology. And why this has happened? A, because we were unaware and B, we were, we were unprepared. I have been attending a lot of webinars. When I, whenever I log in, I see a lot of, you know, scenarios where trainer is struggling saying, you know, uh, am I audible? Am I, you know, how do I add this? How do I share my screen and things like that? And then once again, trainer is struggling with, you know, how do I mute and mute it? And somebody is saying, hold your mic days, then move ahead, move back. And then poor trainer seems to be, you know, lost. I'm sure those of you who are conducting webinars uh, or online sessions would be feeling it this way. Believe me, I have no doubt, you are all good trainers, you are good educational professionals. Uh, given the classroom, you would rock. But suddenly you have to adapt to so many things. And that has actually made us look like amateurs suddenly in the digital world. Okay, to compli complicate matters for that, all our exercises, games, and things have actually gone for a toss. Classroom games don't work virtually. Exercises, all our jokes, etc. Our, you know, uh, what do I say, prepared punches, they cannot literally work on uh, in that intensity on the virtual platform. Because we don't even know when I crack a joke, you, you are laughing or you are sleeping or you are crying. So I am totally unprepared. I don't even know how to deliver the same ex module in which I am an expert. So suddenly my expertise, although it is here, seems to be zero in the digital world or seems to be very low in the digital world. Fact of the life is that we were, uh, this is because we are unprepared to face the digital onslaught. And uh, that's where this digital onslaught has literally impacted us. So all of us are, are kind of facing a digital fatigue these days. You know, tired of screen, tired of juggling between softwares, tired of, you know, not getting the feedback that we are so used to in the classroom or so used to in the training rooms and so many other challenges to face, including bandwidth and internet and so many others. So basically, we're tired and we are unprepared. That's where we are uh, future shocked here. Uh, other thing is, it's not just us or our participants who are also in the future shocked. It's the companies who are future shocked too. And I have elaborated that, so I won't get into much of this, but companies today don't know what happens next. I have I've been reading McKinsey's, I've been reading uh, you know, uh, various other global consultancies and what they've been talking about, and everybody seems to be kind of saying, uh, things will have to be you know, worked out to see the trends coming in and things like that. So that's one. Second thing is uh, companies today are faced with lot of strategic decision making. There are some good trends, but companies today will have to figure out many strategic challenges, including rebooting themselves first, and then obviously uh, uh, getting into the business zone, and then obviously thriving, uh, you know, adapting, etc. So companies are in future shock too. And as I shared earlier, we see a world, VUCA world, four characteristics of the world, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. We were talking about a world pre-corona, which was becoming volatile, uh, things were changing rapidly, which was uh, uncertainty was looming larger than before, complex, no doubt, ambiguous as well. So here we're talking about a VUCA world, which, is, which has been a very complex world, which was earlier complex has become even more dynamic, complex, etc. So I call it VUCA level 3. So basically, we, when we talk about the entire uh, future, which is right now knocking our doorsteps or knocking our door, is this. A changed world, a sudden uh, you know, push into the new realities, uh, and that too when we are unaware and unprepared. Let us now look back a little 
have we faced this kind of things earlier have we really you know been into this situation and we have bounced back etc past learnings are amply clear number one is business moves in cycles we know that there is a there is a valley there is again a peak there is again a valley today we are at the valley but tomorrow there is going to be an upswing tomorrow there is going to be a peak now if you look at the numbers billions of dollars are being withdrawn from the developing countries uh, but does that mean the businesses are closing down no businesses are simply reorienting reworking their strategies and trying to make sense out of the situation so in simple words what it means is businesses are going to take a little time to come out of shocks but when they come out the obvious thing will be they'll try to catch up they'll try to catch up on what they have lost and once again there's going to be a huge boom uh, the second clear trend uh, is lnd is down but not out we may be facing downsizing we may be facing companies are now asking a very simple question do we really need posh offices do we really need those so called training conferences where money was lavishly spent on fun and enjoyment more than training learning and development budgets will see a crunch but companies cannot do away with learning and development in fact they will need it more companies will see this downfall in different ways when it comes to learning and development what we need to know is they can remove the they can they can rather reduce the budget but they can never take lnd out of business it has to be there it will be there and there is no doubt about that so past has told us that even in the worst of the scenarios well coming back to the uh, discussion here when we talk about uh, uh, the entire uh, businesses they are down but not out learning development is down but not out lnd has been successfully able to adapt and evolve i have a faith in this group i have a faith in my learning and development community i have faith in all of us because we are the ones uh, who have demonstrated in past we are the ones who have actually seen those ups and downs and i am sure i have no doubt that we will be the ones who will pull these things out and shape up the things to come come in and i am not saying this as a as a you know paper talk i have a full confidence and i have full clarity about this and if not we who else that's an expression if not now when right lnd has shown openness they have leveraged things like technology they have leveraged things like telecom actually adapted evolved with newer methodologies like blended methodologies and they have still been able to deliver value to the businesses uh, another clear you know learning from past is we have been there we have evolved we have adapted and we are we will also do that now that the challenge has come on our plate and finally innovation and growth a uh, mindset is always been there with learning and development we have always shown in past and i'm only speaking about learning and development as a fraternity worldwide i'm not talking about business etc some of the top companies have you know come and uh, flourished in some of the difficult times like linkedin if you see 2008 uh, adobe captive you know uh, in 2002 we're talking about coursera to, sorry coursera 2011 udemy 2010 those were the times when we were still recovering we were still bruised we were still down but we still ad- accepted the challenge and we bounced back so if you look at it innovation and growth have been our strengths and this time also i don't see any reason why we would not use them how has the e learning evolved because now everyone talks about training and development as e learning and we see e learning based on the google ngram citations we see that a lot of that has happened in 1990s around 2000 and it is flourishing uh, in the 1980s to 2000 remember the cd roms and floppies and blah and blah so we were simply you know distributing information from one place to the other that is where uh, we had limited technology limited telecom yet we delivered the second thing is a uh, period of 2000 to 2008 where we started talking about more of you know structured approaches to e learning so it was not just creating some powerpoint it was not just creating some you know writing a document here and there it was more like a module it was more like the storyboarding it was more like some experience and around 2002 we started thinking in terms of systemic approach called lms learning management system so uh, moodle which is one of the oldest uh, lmss in the world uh, is about what 18 19 years old now we uh, then said about 2008 to 2017 where you saw rise of you know you coursera linkedin udemy uh, khan academy an academy and many other things 2008 to 2007 is i could say the growth started picking up and by 2020 i mean we were already into growth trajectory 
although the world is devastated today uh, one positive side of it has put e learning it has put training into its rightful place in fact the kind of flip or support that e learning has received today is phenomenal i don't i could i couldn't see that much coming in next 10 years also but now it is hyper drive hyper drive is a sudden high acceleration there is sudden explosion uh, in terms of e learning how quickly you adapt how quickly you evolve will decide how you how much success or how much money you will make in that times to come see the money that people have made in last about 5 years same rob percival john portilla i can give you many examples of that but did they earn it on the day one no they did not but they were quick enough to jump onto the bandwagon of e learning a uh, long ago about 5 6 years ago okay so the good news from past is this to shall pass so what is the what is the mantra for uh, you know from past three step response the past tells us to give three step response so the first step is survival when a calamity hits you you battle for survival you try to you know stay afloat the uh, once you are afloat once you've got a grip of things now you are sure that now my survival is taken care of you start looking for adapting and trying to make sense of the things like many of us are now saying what can i do in e learning if we look at past one is survival staying afloat second is adapting quickly and third is then trying to find out opportunities to thrive all right so let me just go ahead uh, and you know remind you of the great man who once said that nobody knows the future with certainty we can uh, however identify go on going patterns so let me come to the patterns basically nobody knows the future so what are the key learning and development trends so the first uh, key trend is your role is going to change no longer we will be trainers who, like in the classroom perspective no doubt no longer will be teachers also in the classroom perspectives because today your classroom time is going to shrink earlier we were used to you know we were used to brick and mortar model of the learning we thought of games we thought of in you know exercises we even went outside and we talked about omdps outbound management development programs i don't know how that's going to work in the future but uh, classrooms are going to shrink and so is your role going to change so from a teacher you are now going to use uh, the digital enablements technology and uh, you know e learning tools to design an experience and kindle the curiosity among the learners and that's what the hole in the wall experiment actually was you know if people are interested no matter what they will learn so our role now will be to get them interested in a digital or a virtual world our role will be to facilitate their movement development and growth in the digital using the digital medium as opposed to the physical medium so we we are going to be digital facilitators whatever name you can call it i am not into the naming game so basically when we talk about uh, your role it's going to change from a mere delivery person to an enabler uh, a lot of things will be taken over by machine so for example when i when 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 we do consult education institutions we tell them okay look at a typical faculty member today earlier it was 90% delivery 10% uh, non teaching work today it's almost 50% non teaching work and 50% classroom teaching that's the role change that has happened over last so many years second thing from classroom to dynamic virtual learning environment or lms or lx speeds it does appear that e learning will eat in into a huge share of classroom learning uh, and it's just a rough estimate uh, earlier if classroom was about 80% and online was about 20% we could see a trend reversing into 60% of online and probably 40% of classroom but who knows what it all depends on to what extent the institution digitizes it and as, as if we go by the universe uh, sorry fms announcements today uh, top 100 universities would definitely be aggressively getting into a heavy digitalization because this is where a lot of cost saving is this is where a lot of enablement is perhaps the teacher student relationship also would be different so uh, you will have to get used to dvle or dynamic virtual learning environment this of past was distributing feedback forms then trainer is to bring it home then punch it into excel or upload it into excel then analyze everything is past now all you need to do is get a link login analysis is on your table likewise many changes are going to come thanks to the dynamic learning environment so get used to it that's the second thing 
the third trend is what's your business model earlier as individuals you were happily you know going and meeting corporates say I'm a freelancer and you know, I'm give me class and participants or as a teacher as you say I'm a you know, teacher and I would like to teach in the school or colleges or whatever it is but now I think what's your business model going to be because teaching in the classroom we have seen will be less limited or fewer and fewer so online if you have to teach or be a freelancer think about what model are you going to really put it into place so last time also i had highlighted one is a cost model where you talk about three sub models like you know a free freemium and a premium model uh, the second is experience based so you create your own uh, you know dynamic learning environment invite people to be a part of it so what netflix does is essentially or uh, what uh, you know uh, where, where they say try this uh, prime try this free and get this experience of the whole model and then be with us so what is your business model you'll have to rework your business model uh, the model that you've been deploying so far may adapt may may will have to be adopted or may not may even need to be changed right so that's a clear trend uh, we'll think about business model again the tni cycle tni design delivery cycle will change completely go to the client meet people carry out virtual interviews sorry carry out carry out actual interviews of virtual sorry and uh, this is where we used to do this and then do this end to end process company specialized in, in that there are providers who charge money at different stages including us we have done that also in past but can i do that now i don't know whether it has to be virtual adapted and if for a virtual adaptation it the companies may still pay but then you will have to be quick in terms of designing the pre training during training and post training interventions and creating as an end to end package to be offered to the client and that to a different package possibly for different clients that means you will have to be digitally very fast and smooth to be uh, you know you will have to have a collaboration with the providers who are who will take care of all this digital aspect so this is this calls for agility this calls for flexibility this calls for sharpness and this calls for turning around very quickly and rapidly because when everyone is enabled or powered by technology then it is how fast you use it to deliver the goods but now with technology assisted thing it will change so change in the tni design delivery process um, will happen perhaps a uh, change in the user expectations is inevitable you look at uh, your own kid at black home you know you give him some very dry dull kind of a video and kid would want to change it immediately but when the kid is let's say watching some cartoon or some uh, if the kid is a teenager then he or she is watching insta or anything they endlessly sit and keep on flipping things up there there is another observation at black home you must have seen if they are playing game online game like pubg they are totally drowned into it because of the immersing experience it provides but sorry to say look at some of the presentations of our own fraternity members i'm not talking about my or yours or anyone but just open up your eyes go back in past and see the kind of presentations we have made see the kind of layouts that we have see the kind of font combinations and it's nothing short of torture i have seen some of the senior trainers who telling me that ye powerpoint wagera to mere bas ki baat nahi main classroom mein jaunga i would start from to i will navigate and i i know how to handle it okay no problem sir as you wish and today's learners in the digital environment would expect a lot more polish a lot more finesse and a lot more style with you so this is where you will have to up your digital uh, digital quotient or design quotient both and make things more appealing beautiful and nice because on an average i must tell you the attention span on a video is about what hardly 2 or 3 minutes so user expectations users will expect a international class users would expect an engage, highly engaging design and experience both you will have to learn powerpoint tricks you will have to learn design tricks you will have to master you know design considerations the f pattern the a pattern the z pattern of designing and thanks to technology you can now animate you can now create simulations you can create branches and learning maze etc so true to this uh, use technology to create immersing engaging user experience that should be your 
you know action point uh, coming back to some more trends here this is this is where new players new impact uh, there will be a lot of consolidations mergers because as you see thousands of you know e learning applications thousands of providers at the same time there is that we have to you know do a lot of patchwork so for instance if i were to make a session on zoom today i would probably be using different different applications to create this experience for you and the research also says it very clearly it says that uh, you know on an average a person uses about 11 different applications to create his e learning material or stack in future they would move towards more of a consolidated suite or a software which will do multiple things for you already most of the lmss do that for you but we will see more and more sophistication more and more advances there so get familiar with such a thing uh, by the way the biggies are also going to enter into a big way facebook has already announced because of which zoom stock fell by about 7% uh, the next thing i would rather say is your area of expertise is going to change what leadership are we talking about when there are no followers around me so perhaps your leadership will have to be changed into digital leadership now or a remote leadership we are talking about sales when i don't have a, you know client sitting in front of me some somebody should come something like a virtual selling skills model or virtual relationship model so probably you will have to relook at what you're offering and see how it is going to translate virtually and more importantly what needs it's going to satisfy because end of the day it's needs what problem you solve for the customer so if you are able to solve this problem of e selling if you are able to solve this problem of you know e performance management you are able to solve this problem of e relationship management you have a model he they willing to buy and there you can charge by licenses there you can charge by lump sum whatever the charge you know if you are able to show value you can reap money so be ready for changes in your area of expertise keep on keep tabs on uh, price differentiation and war this trend i particularly you know, want to touch a little bit there will be a lot of price war there this will be even more because now the technology will help you to create same experience for others very easily so basically i create once and then sell it sell it across retail prices are expected to go down those astronomical figures that we were used to earlier in the physical classroom environment because of scarcity of my dates my you know availability etc uh, it's no longer going to be there because i don't need physical thing new age training evaluations will be there in place so earlier we were talking about reactions learning behavior results rlbr framework and many other evaluation framework बिजनेसेस यूज टू आस ट्रेनिंग कैसा रहा हम इसमें हम बोलते थे अच्छा रहा लोग बहुत एंजॉय कर गए पार्टिसिपेट कर रहे थे ये आप कैसे डिसाइड कर रहे हो बिकॉज यू आर एबल टू ऑब्जर्व देयर रिएक्शन यू आर एबल टू सी देयर पार्टिसिपेशन एंड दैट्स हाउ यू कंक्लूडेड बट इन अ वर्चुअल एनवायरमेंट वेन यू एंड पार्टिसिपेंट अलोन आर देयर नो बडी इज ड्रॉपिंग इन हाउ वुड यू प्रूव दैट और वेन यू हैव क्रिएटेड अ कोर्स पुट इट अप देयर एंड पीपल आर सींग इन देयर ओन टाइम दैट इज दैट इज कॉल्ड अ सिंक्रनस इन द लर्निंग लैंग्वेज सो हाउ डू यू नो दैट the new evaluation will tell me how many clicks have happened what time he has spent how much which part of the course he has liked most which part he has not given proper feedback to or has he gone through the path learning path that i have created and things like that so this is where uh, get ready for the new age evaluation terminologies and methods and shape of employment uh, in lnd will will be impacted we may see less physical vacancies but uh, when one door closes the other door opens in simple words you will get more vacancies in the other areas like content designing virtual administration virtual coaching uh, e uh, you know e mentoring e grooming and things like that so as i was sharing uh, we have also shared that in the other course there that the average salaries of e tutor and e uh, you know teachers in us are around 120000 dollars a year correct so this is where uh, you know you could see some changes up there as well and besides that when you create a good course people would buy it and that's there the sky is limit so employment is going to change now all said and done i could say from the trends that there are interesting times ahead there is never before an opportunity which is coming up and this is where i believe uh, i can definitely say with confidence that there are interesting times ahead for those who are willing to you know take charge and really go into it and not behave like an illiterate men by uh, alvin top so basically uh, hard facts about e learning world or digital learning perhaps some of you may already be into this but 
for the purpose of everyone i thought let me just share only about two facts not many uh, the first and the foremost is it's a there, there's a there was this popular serial called game of thrones got right uh, i call it gop game of patience the numbers the people who made tons and tons of money i've shown them they played this well they got rewarded you play this well you will be rewarded patience is the golden trait at this moment do things you know learn the virtual uh, environment with patience try to adjust adapt with patience let the trends clarity emerge with patience and you will be rewarded so uh, e learning is a game of patience even when you try to design models even when you try change your programs from classroom to virtual room okay uh, it is not just the same of uploading a powerpoint up there secondly uh, this is a popular saying in our e learning nothing to do with animal lovers this is i'm not actually killing or eating an elephant uh, this refers to the kind of learning approach called micro learning so the answer is how to eat an elephant bit by bit how to eat an elephant bit by bit in other words if you have tons and tons of material how would you pass it on to the participant bit by bit small bite size learning micro learning is catching in rapidly insta is a super hit because of that tiktok was a super hit because of that they captured on bite size thing so a 1 minute video or a 3 minute video with some style things and it became instantly viral of course i'm not telling you to behave like tiktokians <laughs> but of course what i mean by that is uh, micro learning will be the norm of the day so uh, if you have tons and tons of knowledge you are a learned exponent of particular say communication presentation whatever skills you have start thinking micro start thinking about micro capsules of what you know and you you will realize that you are sitting on a mountain of capsules no problem you, you know you have too many things so you will have too big a mountain of the small things no worry translate them into course and then pass it on to the participant so that's second fact and behavior related to that please know that god lies in details when it comes to e learning you have to define everything machine doesn't understand so if you don't say this machine won't say this if you don't define that participant have to click here it won't tell participants to click here if you don't tell machine that first let them solve a quiz and then only allow them to go ahead so if you don't tell this to machine machine will simply allow them to go ahead so you have to not just see mota moti in our language but you have to define that to the micro possible level so for example some companies who are progressive were earlier doing things called lgs or fgs learners guide or facilitators guide wherein they used to say at 3 minutes 23 seconds show this slide and say these words use this example then the guide used to say generate discussion and discussion was left to the participant now e learning starts at generate discussion stage you still have to define all those things and then your detailing has to happen even below what questions to be asked what answer you can expect what branching can happen the more deeper you delve in the more successful your learning will be please remember but in the virtual environment when you are not around when you when your presentation is being played to them you you have to ensure whether they have learned it or not otherwise in the end quiz they are going to fail they are going to fail and then your learning will be unsuccessful so god lies in detail detailing is time consuming detailing is exhaustive and if a small mistake happens there redo it when we design a course module or a course content we go through minute details at least kaun sa picture kaun sa slide mein kaun se coordinates pe aana itna bhi minute decide karte hain and every picture everything is an asset so in a course we have thousands of assets because we use multiple pictures we use animations etc तो इसका सबका ट्रैक रखना पड़ता है तो वन वैल्यूएबल स्किल एज अ ट्रेनर फॉर यू वुड बी इफ यू आर अ पर्सन ऑफ अ डिटेल्स इफ यू आर हैप्पी टू हैंडल डिटेल्स एंड यू कैन वेरी कंफर्टेबली मैन्यूवर टू प्रोजेक्ट एक्सेट्रा पर हैप्स यू हैव अ न्यू करियर ओपनिंग कॉल यू नो ट्रेनिंग प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट और ट्रेनिंग प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट स्किल्स बिकॉज वी वुड नीड दैट बैडली वी डोंट हैव इट टेक्निकली स्पीकिंग ग्रीक लैटिन आई मीन वेन चमड़ी स्पीक्स समथिंग दैट वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड वी थिंक are you speaking greek or latin english please welcome to the world of e learning where your classroom language is not the same as virtual learning language the language here would be different here you will talk about learning objectives which are common i understand here you will talk about motion here you will talk about quizzes here you will have to talk about interventions here you will have to talk about 
you know uh, restrictions etc and these are new terminologies if you have not used them earlier no worries we have a glossary in our course you know you just go through that you will pick up some things on the job you will learn them by heart but this language is different than your speed training language learn this language to have a smooth journey that's how it is and it's very natural because even when we go to the other countries uh, other you know parts where the language is different we try to learn pick up two words here we have to now get in our here we have to take our life into new domain so there it's quicker you learn the language the better it would would be what is a module what is a you know uh, topic what is a learning activity what is a learning resource these are all language terms that you need to be familiar with hand holding is must see i have seen some of my trainers they wanted to save some money so they have not come to you know consultations coaching etc perhaps they are discovering it the hard way around and that's okay if you have time if you have you know patience and if you know where to search for you can discover this there is there is nothing hard and fast in the world of e learning all you need to do is simply know where to look and simply have the patience to work go along with that but if you have hand holding your journey will be faster you are adaptation and money making will be quicker so let's come to the final part i hope this five facts will get you you know on the ground so i i have listed six strategies quickly for the future to be a better future right the first and the foremost strategy that you must decide for yourself is what's going to be your value and volume play how are you going to differentiate in this crowded marketplace is it going to be value based thing so you say i'm the exponent of you know leadership in this entire country so uh, my modules will be way different than them hence they they are charged at premium typically in past e learning has been successful as a volume game high volume low value value volume is what you have to decide now you might say that some part of my expertise i would reserve it as a premium one some part which can be given away easily i would rather give it free or at a very emotional value now that choice is yours you need to know where to draw which line this, this is a consultative discovery process work on your business model as i shared earlier how much is the free part that would i offer how much is premium or an experience based thing so come experience my model like coursera does experience this if you are satisfied pay for the remaining thing and then uh, how much could be premium so so you have to decide on your business model and you need to have a platform as well the other competencies that you must develop as a personal strategy is we call fantastic four now that's something what i call it uh, what are those avsd avsd is audio video sound and design your e learning module is an output of these four competencies or are these four processes this is where your design matters a lot so as a trainer you must be able to uh, play with all three or four i'm not saying you don't all of us know how to play make powerpoint slides all of us know how to import videos actually try and create something like a video plus me is equal to delivery but when i talk about competencies it is the uh, command over it it is the ability to manipulate sounds videos images produce the content of my thoughts and then design an experience using that so these four competencies are the ones which really help you and why this four because this is what creates a user experience in simple words user sees the outcome of avsd so this is where fantastic four will help you uh, pick up some courses in uh, such things and i guess they would help you hand holding mein ho jata hai so the other important strategy which you must follow is network and collaborate people like us are into the enablement space we don't sell our modules we help you sell your modules so collaborate with people like us uh, and consult and put it up there collaborate with them network with other professionals who may benefit from you evolve your models like you know for instance one model could be upfront charging the second model could be you know course revenue sharing so you could collaborate with a designer who designed the part of your delivery and you share the revenues there are many ways of doing that so you may have two or three professionals associated with you someone who gives you design and tech support someone who market gives you marketing support and you are focused on your technical or your subject matter expertise second last strategy is research and practice please remember you are a part researcher part practitioner now have you seen mobile companies launching new uh, mobiles models answer is yes have you seen insurance companies launching new products answer is yes 
how much of amount of research how much of amount of market study how much of amount of efforts go into making of that product enormous i have a basic question if your modules are your product how much of amount of research are you putting in how much of amount of design thought you are putting in how much of amount of market sensitivity you are tapping into that's precisely what i'm saying it is easier to do control c control v but it is easier to get caught in the digital world also there are plugins there are softwares which can tell you how much you have copied from what extent from what website so what happens if you tell the company that this is my content and this is what you produce and company runs a software check and says sorry mr parke this is not your content this is someone else's already you need to research you need to create your own and practice design newer things newer vistas so part researcher part practitioner part designer you have to juggle between these i am not scaring you but i am encouraging you to think originally continue doing that this is where a lot of original content would uh, attract more money as compared to easily available copied content and finally uh, finally the last strategy that i would recommend is blue ocean strategy blue ocean has been one of the phenomenally successful approach to com- highly competitive markets uh, red ocean and blue ocean are two oceans that that's what they suggest so a red ocean is highly competitive where cutthroat competition exists and a lot of you know, similar products etc etc typically like our scenario so when i say communication skills program you would have tons and tons of people applying there trainers applying there fact so here is a red ocean now what kind of blue ocean would exist for me could the blue ocean be in terms of uh, being a virtual coach could the blue ocean be in terms of sectors that i have not tapped in so far the new environment the new marketplaces the new products that you have not still tried the newer ways that you have not explored that's blue ocean let's put things into perspective a we are talking about learning from past there is a light at the end of the tunnel the competencies uh, or the trends tell us that, that a lot of things are going to change very rapidly so agility becomes the hallmark the third thing that says is the hard facts tell us that it's not easy but it is definitely possible doable and finally these six strategies tell us that if you focus on uh, the business model which is suitable to you and your expertise if you focus on uh, you know your avsd or fantastic four competencies you know then you collaborate and network connect with com- complementing professionals platforms and uh, market places including blue ocean ultimately i always keep telling to the trainers teachers in my technology enabled teaching i've been conducting these programs for years now technology enabled teaching so i always tell them this equation uh, which is sme plus eq plus dq is equal to success sme is subject matter expertise eq is completely known to you eq like eq is the ability to understand the digital opportunities translate them into uh, you know opportunities and command over certain required digital intervention software etc so dq is a broad term this is where i come to the end of my session